Uppercut, uppercut. Sonic Boom! Well, hello there, humans of these earthlings, whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, if you're lucky enough indeed to be doing it too. Welcome back to another dose of tanking glory. I'm Bushka, and this channel is all about making the humans better. I've been playing on the EU server for the past eight or nine days. And I gotta tell you, there's a lot of humans out there that could stand to be better. Uh, so I've decided to give a little bit of a walkthrough on heavy tank driving using this tank, the IS-4, because, well, I'll break down exactly why in just a second, but I wanna talk about a lot of things that I see people doing wrong that are so basic. And if you wanna be like a 60% plus player who averages 2,000 damage, and that's something else that's wild on AU. There's so many people I see playing tier 10 with under 1200 average damage, which is nutty, right? That means that you're not playing a lot of high tier games and you're taking really bad metas and you're taking a lot of really bad habits into big games and you're getting punished for it. So if you want to be a 60 cent player and just 2k average damage driving tanks that are tier 10, this is where you start. There is an old aphorism that there are 40% of the games you can't win, 40% of the games you can't lose, and how you do in the remaining 20% determines where your win rate ends up. It's kind of round numbers, but it's not a bad way of looking at it because a lot of the times when you're playing, the team is just going to be batshit crazy and there's nothing you can do about it, right? But when you're in a tank like the IS-4, what you can control is a heavy flank. Now, you can't always be certain of it, but you're going to see a lot of what I'm talking about in a drive like this, how it feels like I've been waiting quite a long time, but the game's only been going for two minutes. What I did was put myself in a really strong inside position on the heavy route of the map. I just went the way a heavy tank would normally go, not the wide open spaces of a fast medium flank. And I looked at the mini map until I figured out where all the tanks were. And then I waited for one of those tanks on the inside rail where I was to make an error. In this case, that CC mark. And that gave me the opportunity to push forward. I've taken one hit, right? I'm gonna do 3K in the game. It's a very easy drive. It's a very patient drive and it's a very simple drive. And at no point in time, did I risk a whole lot of hit points? And what I also did was made sure that by staying alive, the guys on my flank were able to grind them down. And your team needs heavy drivers like this. Now, why am I running the IS-4? The IS-4 is such a vanilla big heavy tank. It's a proper super heavy. You've got 2,650 hit points, you have a lot of heavy armor, and you can angle this tank. Plus, although it doesn't have high DPM, it has that American heat. So you get 340 millimeters of heat penetration, which gives you the opportunity to go straight through the face of, say, an E100, or a whole lot of other tanks like Mintaro's that can give super big heavies a lot of trouble if they don't have heat and high heat pen. Let's talk about what we're doing here. Like I said, we look at the map. You count how many heavy tanks there are on the map and you try and set yourself up in such a way that you're not going to be the guy who's out of position. You're in the middle route, pretty simple. That AMX 50B is an idiot. He's huge. He's put himself in a horrific position where he has no cover from the sides and he's on a full reload. So there's no problems here whatsoever for me just poking out and getting another shot on him. Where is he? You there, mate? Is he backing up or is he just going to sit there and get wrecked? They're not giving me any trouble at the moment. What I'm doing is basically getting free shots until someone comes and stops me from getting free shots. I'm holding the hill. I've got TDs behind me. If someone comes over the top of the hill, the TDs will see them. If they don't come over the top of the hill, I'll keep shooting. There we go. They came over the top of the hill, I got hit, I turn around, and I go back into heavy tank roll. But I'm not going to push up. I'm not like, oh my god, that guy hit me. I have to go push up. The first thing I do is put myself in a position where I won't bleed. I won't take any more damage. I can't be penned. 
because I'm side scraping off the rock in front of me. And then I move over to the soft cover next to the hard cover to get a look. And then I go from that hard cover to the next hard cover and I get another look. And at no point in the time that I've been up the top here has anyone been able to do anything. I'm not gonna push over the top of the hill to get that shot. I'm waiting. And this is how you rack up damage. This is how you slowly grind a team under. And I see again and again and again and again, especially on EU. I think EU could be the craziest metas I've ever seen. He's fired, I can push over and get a shot. Try and track him while I'm doing it. Move to the next bit of hardcover and set up for an angle against that target when no one else can hit me. Clear the target. Move to the next bit of hardcover and set up an angle where no one else can hit me. At no point in this time that we've been driving have I done anything particularly crazy or particularly wild. I'm going to get two or three kills. I'm going to get 3,000 damage. I'm going to take no bloody damage. And I'm going to drive so simple and straightforward that it's ridiculous. Now I'm going to show you two games. Both of these games were for me adrenaline packed, okay? They were games where I had to do a lot of thinking on the fly. This is always a tough game for me, Himmelsdorf, because it's so bad if you get it wrong, you know? If you call one flank and you then stop and wait, like I like to play an IS-4, like a super heavy, like a, a whole tank, like a Kranwagen or any of these kind of tanks, one thing to watch out with the IS-4, by the way, is if you're facing like a Jaegeru and they know what they're doing, they can HE splash the deck, okay? I'm not stopping for this shot because I want to get to cover in case there's someone behind him, but they can HE splash the back of your side scrape deck and do quite a large amount of damage. Now, I've got a 57 Heavy with me. I've seen the flank. I'm counting tanks, and I'm like, we got to get rolling. We have to get rolling. That's good, having a 57 Heavy here, because a 57 Heavy is an excellent tank for dumping damage next to a tank like the IS-4, which is an excellent tank for holding. Now, I'm pushing across, look where I'm going from every single shot. I'm gonna take, I'm gonna make a mistake here. I don't give the heat on the object 140 enough credit. Time to take a moving shot there, always gonna be a dodgy one. And the 140 does have good heat pen, like, and he gets one right through the top of my upper glacis. Take that shot, pull back. Get in the position where I'm not going to take damage. Move to my next position where I'm not going to take damage. That's a really tough shot for any tank to make, let alone that Yag Tiger. He's going to be shooting AP or APCR into the top of my turret. Probably not going to hit. And I'm just setting up. Hard cover to hard cover. Look at the angle when I'm moving forward. See how all that anyone can see is the side of my tank? Straight into my next side scrape. Looking at the minimap. Who needs help? Where are shots available? I can get shots off this dying T95, and then I'm back into cover again. I'm gonna drop adrenaline rush. There's no opportunities for that. Now, this is where you can make mistakes. You're like, I've just blown adrenaline rush. I better go and get some more shots. No, what you need to do is be alive. You need to conserve your hit points as best you can. If your team is falling apart, I look behind me. I'm confident that 57 Heavy can clear the, Ye the Yag Tiger. My big problem here is I want to get rid of that Minotaro and I want to get rid of low hit point targets. Clearing guns is more important than doing damage, okay? I'm like the 57 Heavy, he's probably all right back there. There's a 183. I've got to choose between having a 183 left alive or a 57 Heavy left alive. I am 100% going to choose the 57 Heavy. The 183, for all that it's like nice to have something that can do that much damage, it really isn't a tank that's good in late game situations because obviously once it fires, it's dead. They're just gonna rush and push it. I really want this 57 Heavy with me. So I'm turning now, the Heavy's cleared that AMX 30. We're not stopping, we're gonna take an on the move shot. We've missed some of those, we get that one. Straight away into a side scrape, looking at the mini map. I'm holding, I'm holding. The 57 Heavy's on a full reload. He's getting ready to go again. I'm holding. There is. Nothing wrong with holding and stopping. There's still three minutes 50 left in this game and the Minotauro has made a huge error. I'm willing to take one because I've been conserving hit points. He's pushed past me and he thinks I'm just gonna sit there to clear that 57 heavy. The heavy hits, I hit and suddenly he's a one shot. 
And I'm going to angle up as I go around this corner. This is a tough shot to hit for the uh, Euro. And he bounces it. He's got the three shotgun with the low alpha and he was farming Premo. Mintaro is too slow to get back around and we're not stopping. We're still moving through. So this is a tank that is not super quick. It's quick enough. And it's a tank that's not super accurate. But you shouldn't be firing from a long way away. It is a tank that's very tough with a lot of penetration and it can side scrape well. And so I thought that was a, a good game to showcase this. I'm going to show you one more game where I put myself in a really weird position and try and keep the team going and try and get the team to live. Um, I'll, I'll let you in on a little secret. We lost one game in 10 games running the IS-4 today. None of them were games that I really spectacularly pushed in. Uh, apart from this one. <laughs> uh... Uh, try and figure out if this is the game we lost or not. Watch as you go along. So firstly, I don't normally go this route. Um, we had a lot of heavy tanks and I was facing this direction. So what I wanted to do was come up here. On Asia, I would never do this. But on EU, I swear to God, I've seen three TDs push up here. I've seen all the mediums go the other side and all the heavies come this side. EU is basically medalless. It is... Whichever way people's tanks are facing, they will often just go that direction. Now, you can see how hard the red team have pushed through. They're already through into our spawn. And I'm thinking they're not pushing that far unless they have someone here. I'm worried about running into TDs. They have some big TDs there. So what I want to do is push down here. And there's a little spot just here behind the cap circle where there's a bit of brush. And I'm going to set up. I'm not going to keep pushing. That would be a huge, huge error. There's a Jaegeru there. You never want to put this tank in a position where you have to angle to multiple directions. There's not many tanks that can do that. One thing the IS-4 does do very well is it's quite low. But if you turn the turret side on like that IS-4 does after firing a shot, that's a big mistake. Uh, you've got to try and keep your turret facing the direction of the people that are are firing at you and you've got to try and keep your sides clear. I make a huge error with a Progetto in just a tick. There's a couple of big errors here. I wait till this guy starts pulling back and then I fire because that means even though he was waiting for me, he's on the move which kills his dispersion. This Progetto is pushing through. Now I see him coming. I screw my reverse up here. I don't think he's going to be that aggressive and I actually should have just kept reversing around. That shot there, that extra shot was really frustrating. You can see my guys on the left now have pushed way too far down to get that Jaegeru and they're basically in a horrific crossfire with a 57 Heavy and that VK9001P. The Progetto's trying to be too clever by half here and I'm absolutely ready for him to come around the other side. I set my angles, hard cover to hard cover. I'm safe as houses. But look at the bleed that's happened over there on the left flank as we've come down. They have cleared that Jaegeru, but they've absolutely lost every single tank there to do it. I'm very worried here about going up here because the Progetto is not the one that I'm worried about. It's the 57 having the VK90 01P, but I need to clear this medium. Having this medium buzzing around, no, not good at all. Now trying to reset my camo, trying to get my angles right. IS-7 is in trouble. Oh, this is brutal to watch this because I change up. I'm trying to put HE on so I can get shots on the back end of this T-57 Heavy. And I don't want him to really think about me being here until I get clear shots on him. There's one. And then I decide to risk taking a hit to get a big shot, a HE round in the back. But I switch up, I hit the shot, and I fire heat instead of HE, which takes like 200 damage off the hit, which is really frustrating. So I gave up way too many hit points there. I could have done that same shot by just reversing up a little bit and not giving the VK90 01P any options. Now, there's still the E4. Oh, look at that T57 Heavy now. Look at that T57 Heavy. There's still the E4 and he's just destroying everything over there. 
The 57 Heavy shoots me with HE, 36 hit points. And I've got to make some really tough decisions here because I don't know why our last tank is screaming down the hill. Uh, like I said, EU. This, I... Mm, RNGesus deserts us. We're still playing this one, and this is very much the 20% kind of games that you can win. And that 9001P has basically sat up the top, doing not much, and he's a big reason why we're still in the game. Uh, if he had a pushed, this game would have been over. Waiting for that 57 heavy, but I know that I don't have a lot of options. There is a big hit. Another mistake. And you can look at games like this and know they look very close and like you're doing a really good job. Here's that HE, uh, that heat panel I was talking about before. You can look at a game like this and you feel like you're doing a good job, but you look at it and you see the mistakes you're making in your gameplay. But for newer players especially, oh, we're, we're setting our angles correctly and we're very aware of that VK90. What we want to do is face hug him and kill the 57 heavy. Okay? So we're expecting the heavy to come in. I kill auto aim. I don't want it to get stuck on another tank. Angle up to the 57 heavy while I'm scoped in. And now we're face hugging the VK90. Perfect, right? And that is good play. That's exactly what we were trying to do. And this is a tough gig. This is why you love that heat pen because you're at least a chance of going through one of the toughest turrets in the game to pen. It's not gonna be easy, but it's possible. So we switch back to AP because in a second, because we know we're gonna get a side shot and we want max damage, and this is where we lose it. We've already lost the game. Like, we've already lost the game. I thought I'd switch to AP there. I'm just missing. But having to go over that hill, I could have pulled back instead and AP'd his front wheel and tried to track him and then get him back. And I wish I had of. But we did some stupid stuff there that cost us the game. And I keep, I keep trying to switch my shells and missing with my fingers because I've changed my controls up. Long story short, uh, I play a lot of PUBG Mobile and I use six finger claw on PUBG Mobile and my zoom button, my scope, my sniper scope button is normally where my fire button is on the left of the screen and my fire button is normally on the right and it's absolutely screwing with my hands. So I'm trying to think my way through this. I hope that gave you a little bit of an insight into how you should be driving your heavy tanks that are heavies, proper heavies, tanks that have the armor, like a Tiger II or a Lerva or a, an IS-3 even to a lesser degree. Tanks that can pen and hold and have hit points, E-75s, you don't want those tanks to be exposing their sides. You've got to go hard cover to hard cover. You've got to conserve your hit points. You've got to be patient. Like. There's a 183 out there. There's a whole lot of other tanks. The, the T100LT keeps pressing in a sec, you'll see here. Anyway, I don't want to go too far in it. We're already 20 minutes in and I, I don't want to waste your time. But I really feel like making some of these back to basics videos and if you want to spread them around the channels of Blitz and these are the kind of videos that will change your Blitz life because so many people just don't get these basic nuanced things because no one that they watch is telling them to do it no one is talking about being patient and and conserving hit points and taking your time and setting up shots and just like if you are in a super heavy tank and you can carry your hit point pull through to the end of the game and you face a couple of mid mid hit point tanks you can set up wins that are unexpected and that you don't normally get just by changing your gameplay style and once you get this tank or a tank like it up to 60 percent or even 50 percent as a jump off point then you can do a lot more and change a lot more about what you do in the game and something else about heavy tanks that is so important is Mediums are great and they look fantastic and incredible players look even better in mediums. But when the meta is dog shit and when all the people on your team don't know what the hell they're doing and when you get like three medium tanks drive the middle of Black Goldville and start running heavy routes and your TDs have gone the heavy route and your heavies have gone the medium route. Being in a medium 
it's very, very hard to draw those kind of games back. Like, you've got to be some kind of player. And most of us just aren't those kind of players. And there's no shame in that. But being better at the game by being more intelligent about the way you play and your decision-making process will make everyone on your team like you more. And when you've got like a heavy tank actually being a freaking heavy tank and holding a route, not like this yo who was sniping somewhere for no apparent reason and left that VZ up on the top and then got stuck in a freaking canal at the bottom of the game. These are the decisions that will ruin your team and will ruin your enjoyment of the game. I'm Bushka. Look after yourselves. I'm off to stream the uh, Summer Cup, the EU finals, and uh, go team. I hope it's as much fun as it was last year. Until next time, look after yourselves. Stay safe in the battlefield. Bye for now.